Hello and welcome friends to another video. This time, for change, I decided to uh, record this video while driving my car and, and talk about what I want to talk about today. <coughs> today is uh, July 30th, Tuesday. And last couple days, I've been basically busy with finding stuff, thinking about it, you know, sharing things about uh, the, the Olympic Games opener in France, in Paris, France. So, this is basically going to be the, the topic of, of this video. Like I said, uh, for, for some changes, you know, instead of uh, doing this in my office, in front of my my computer, I'm gonna do it like that, you know, just just drive it. Um, I'm not necessarily going in a particular place. I'm just driving around. I don't know, maybe I go stop by somewhere, you know, a park and around the lake. I don't know. Depends on how I feel. Nothing is planned. You got it? Nothing is planned. Other than the fact that I wanted to talk about it's more like venting and sharing my opinions and actually my feelings, my, my anger I should say about the uh, that I don't know what adjective to use but the Olympic opener uh, opening ceremony in Paris. Alright, again, you know, nothing is scripted, no material is being prepared or whatever, uh, you know, just, just the fact that, you know, I'm here talking as if, you know, there's a friend of mine, a close buddy of mine, who's just you know, kind of talking about it, renting, sharing our, you know, thoughts and feelings and emotions. Alright, we all saw the way... <coughs> Uh, they did this, they displayed, uh, they put on a show of disgusting, utterly ugly, uh, demonic, satanic show in Paris in the name of Olympics game, so-called in the name of Olympic spirit. You know, number one question is, if you, if you look at all the Olympic game openers from the previous Olympic games, such as, um, you know, 20, uh, 2020, um, or before. The Sochi Olympic Games, um, Beijing Olympic Games, you name it. They were all very suitable to the Olympic spirit, the athletic performance, the best top athletic performance, uh, gathering, for the highest level of athletic competition, the sports competition. And that spirit must be respected to and celebrated with a kind of opening ceremony that would be suitable to that, that sort of event, that sort of uh, extremely, the most highest level of uh, athletic competition. What we saw, first off, you know, let alone everything. The religious sensitivities, the cultural sensitivities, politics, everything. Just one question, one simple question. What was it doing? Again, apart from any, any kind of judgment, what was it doing? What kind of message it was carrying? What was the message it was trying to convey in the name of Olympics? Was it artsy? In what way it was related to the sports? In what way it was related to Olympic Games? The competitions in, Olymp in Olympic Games? In what way it was related to anything about sports? That's number one question. The number two 
is it, the open and blatant uh, mockery of the Christian religion. <coughs> the what they did was it was obviously representing the Last Supper of Jesus Christ before before he was crucified. And they were basically mocking that Last Supper, which which is deemed to be very uh, holy by all devout and maybe halfway devout Christians. All two point, almost two point five billion Christian people globally watched it, and any of them who have faith, have a respect for some religious uh, inclinations and beliefs, either practicing religious, devout religious, uh, devout Christians, or non-practicing yet still uh, respecting the Christian values, these people, billions of them, they were insulted. And the type of insult was not anything that could be covered with any kind of apology, that would, that would be covered with any kind of political maneuvers and manipulations. That was so damn explicit and in your face type of insult to all the Christians in the world. In fact, I wanna add something here. I am not Christian myself. I officially consider myself deist. I don't necessarily believe or follow any organized religion, and I don't practice any religion as it is uh, prescribed in those uh, so-called uh, holy books or holy scriptures. Although I don't myself personally practice it never occurred to me in my life, and it will never happen, <coughs> to go and in your face explicitly insulting people who are devout, who are practicing their religion and faith, and making fun of them, being disrespectful, disrespectful of their beliefs, and, and making a huge, disgusting and ugly mockery of what they believe in their religious symbols, and, and, um, and procedures and religious uh, practices. It's just not me. I can never bring myself to do such a thing and I condemn anyone who is doing it. You can be an atheist and I got no problem with that. I myself, like I said, I'm deist. For those of you, if you have any, any kind of qualms about you know the term deist, the day is, is, a, is a person who believe in creation because I, without any kind of slightest amount, amount of hesitation, I believe we're here, the world is here, the universe is here, everything, the life is here because of a creator. That's my belief. That's what makes me a deist, separates, separates from atheist. An atheist does not believe in any type of creation. God, the concept of God or Allah. So, given the fact that, and this is a fact about me, I'm a deist, again, anyone who knows me can attest to the fact that I never ever insult anyone who's following the teachings of Jesus Christ the teachings of of the Bible or teachings of Muhammad or Quran or Islam or Judaism I only mention these three because these three are the the major three major Abrahamic religions I don't mean I just just because I'm not including the others such as Hinduism or Buddhism I'm not, I don't mean to any kind of exclusionary kind of a statement or insult to them, but 
I'm referring here because of this context only to those Abrahamic religions. And as we know, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam are all Abrahamic religions. It is interesting, supremely interesting, that um, nine years ago, in the same city, Paris, 2015, they were basically making a mockery of Muhammad, the famous Charles Hebdo cartoons, and basically they were making a mockery of, of Muhammad, the prophet Muhammad, the prophet of Islamic religion. According to Islam, uh, there, is, there are no pictures or images or any kind of uh, physical representations, whether it's a picture or statue or anything that would represent uh, the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad. It is extremely rigidly and strictly forbidden. Yet, the, the, the cartoon, the magazine called Charles Hebdo, in the name of, um, whatever you call it, in the name of tolerance, in the name of modernity, whatever, they were uh, making a huge mockery of Muhammad, and they published cartoons representing Muhammad and making fun of him in, in the various different forms and shapes and acts, and that extremely deeply angered the Muslim population in France. And as you know, uh, there's a quite a bit of a Muslim population in, in Paris, especially around the banlieues of Paris. Uh, millions of uh, Muslim people are living. They got so mad that they found the teacher who was uh, showing the cartoons of Muhammad and uh, decapitated his head. And then the following, uh, the violence in the city, following on this uh, on this issue, on this incident, uh, was was so bad that I don't think they can ever imagine even, you know, to 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 insult any kind of any degree of insult to Islam. So the fact that it's interesting. They cannot, they cannot insult Islam or Buddhism or Hinduism. Uh, especially, we saw the, the whole world witness. You know what happens when they when they insult Islam. I strongly believe that it's it's going to be very difficult uh, for those folks like Macron, who is saying this is friends, so this is us. We can do this. Well. They can't, they, they can't bring themselves to insult Islam, yet they got no qualms, no problems, not at all, with insulting Christianity. So one has to stop here and think about, what is it? What is it with the Christianity that you know anyone can feel free to make fun of it, to insult the Christians? To make a mockery of it, to make fun of the symbols of it, and all that. What, what, what's, what is going on with that? You know, I'm kind of curious about that, really curious about that. This is so bad and so very wrong that although I am myself not practicing a uh, Christian person, this level of insult should strike through anyone who has respect to any such uh, values that includes spiritualism that's that's my approach to that it was a disgusting event by those you know filthy walk fest it was nothing but I call it again a walk festival a walk fest with drag queens and LGBTQ type queers and drag queens and gays and, and, and some some disgusting guy painted in blue dancing with one of his testicles hanging and next to him a little child 
scandalously dressed little child next to that guy. Now I'm asking anyone what kind of message message that they were trying to convey. Also, you know that uh, pale white horse. If you notice, all those symbols are actually taken from Bible. The pale white horse is a symbol in Bible. And there was also a gold uh, calf, kind of like a worshiping wolf calf. That's also a story, a biblical story, taken out of Bible, a biblical context. Obviously, that famous uh, image resembling the Last Supper of Jesus Christ before he got crucified by crucified by Romans. All these things, all these symbols representing the Christian faith are taken from Bible and biblical stories or biblical context, I should say. Because, you know, I'm saying if I say biblical stories, I might be insulting actual Christians here without necessarily meaning, meaning it. So they're all taken out of the biblical context just so they can make fun of Bible and Christian faith explicitly. There is no room for any kind of uh, confusion. They were making fun of it in your face. And their excuse, their apology, which came next day, was even worse than their own original crime, original act. They were saying, we were sorry for those who got offended. We're sorry about this is what we are. Just like uh, Emmanuel Macron said, this is France. This is exactly what he said. He said, this is France. What's that supposed to mean? Meaning, this is how we are in France. We say what we want to say. We have complete uh, freedom of expression. We don't care. We're not bound by any kind of moral, religious, and other kind of uh, boundaries. We do what we feel. We say what we think, regardless of whether someone would be offended or not. Just turn here first. I'll turn back on here. That's exactly what French uh, President uh, Emmanuel Macron said, and that's what they did. So the apology was not an even apology at all. It was <laughs> it was almost kind of reinforcing what they did almost they appeared to be like they were apologizing they were saying sorry but not really sorry you know this is who we are this is what we say we're backing up we're not you know standing down we're supporting what we said we believe in what we did and what we what we displayed that was our message oh by the way if you got offended we're sorry that you're offended but, you know, take it or leave it. That's what they were saying. Now, I want to add something else. I'm going to, my, my intention here is to tie this whole thing, this whole, you know, charlatanship, the whole mockery of this of horrible mockery and insult Christian faith to something else. It is the the current uh, state of the of the world. What's happening now in the world? Let's let's take a look at that. Well, this red light is taking forever. Okay, finally, finally. Okay, someone actually. We'll make another turn here in just a sec. Another turn. Right. <clears throat> the global 
system. And the upcoming New World Order, all those things are going hand in hand to bring what I refer to and what you, you know, we all hear, the New World Order. In this, in this ideology, if you call it, because this, what we saw was part of this indoctrination, and yes, it was indoctrination. In this whole game, the globalist elite, which all these people like Emmanuel Macron, for instance, is part of it. European Union, all the European Union members and the rulers of the European Union are part of it. The World Economic uh, Forum, WEF, is part of it. The, the other, the final, final, utmost goal and agenda, in fact, you know, you guys probably know what Agenda 2030 is, the utmost goal of the globalist elite is one new, uh, one new world order, that means one government, again I repeat, a one government with one ruler, control every single soul on this planet. I repeat, every single soul on this planet. And not only every single individual, every single person, and also everything, every resource, every single natural resource on this planet. I might be touching base briefly what I meant by that, the natural resources, the ownership of natural resources, or maybe I might, I might make another video because it warrants a different video on that. But anyway, I just said that now, briefly. In this setup, in this effort, which has been going for a considerable amount of time, I believe we all are feeling that they're kind of getting closer to their goal, to, to accomplish and achieve their goals. Things are getting more and more complex, right? The world is getting more of a complex and uglier place to live in. And eventually, they will bring a chaos which is comparable in its destruction on the scale of World War II because after only a huge uh, disruptions to civilization such as World Wars, World War I and World War II, something similar eventually they will bring to implement the final legs of their plans that will establish on this planet the new world order with a single government controlling every single person to the nth degree. There will not be any any kind of freedom of anything. Examples are, we all know, cashless society. A new economic system a new monetary system which will not be resembling the US dollar as we all know the US dollar is now the current reserve currency of the world economic system and it is being seriously challenged and that is also part of the plan so the, the new world order the plan the New World Order plan has multiple, obviously, uh, multiple faces or uh, dimensions to it. Just like the ones that I mentioned, that those are the economic aspects of it. There is a cultural, religious, political, all those aspects. And what we what we witnessed uh, with the Paris Olympic Games should indicate us that they eventually brought, they were so emboldened to bring themselves to insult openly to Christ, the Christian faith because 
the other one of the other dimensions is the religious or faith dimension and then their goal is to destroy completely the established uh, religious systems and the faith-based systems uh, the, the established organized religions and create their own religion and their own religion is something akin to what we witnessed the drag queens lgbtq and wokeism and wokeism is an ideology that's why i've called this in the indoctrination process wokeism is and has been for instance in the united states has been implemented on all the school system uh you know for instance you know trying to convince uh, asking the kids, like, if the little boy, like, as, as young as five or six years old, if he is wanting to have a sex change through, a, you know, irreversible surgery, they say, well, he should be able to go away and go ahead and have it. No problems about it. That is part of it. Now they came up with all these terms, right? The pronouns, they're asking people... I mean, it's in LinkedIn. When, I, when you create a LinkedIn profile, a system, the LinkedIn is going to ask you, what are your pronouns? Are you he, his, him, her, they, this, that? There are all kinds of pronouns I don't even care about learning. And they came up with this uh, non-binary gender identifications. And then when you ask people, there are some girls I you know, watch. Uh, she's saying, today I feel like a cat. Maybe tomorrow I'm going to feel like a rabbit. So basically, people woke people and the woke culture has brought especially the young generation to this kind of ridiculously beyond pathetic levels this is what i'm talking about as their religion this is the kind of culture and religion of faith that they're trying to implement by eliminating the the, the ages old religious organized religious uh beliefs that's why they're attacking christianity and that's why they chose Olympic Games opening, the French Olympic Games opening in 2024 because they believe their uh, plans are now mature enough to be able to place, to be able to display such acts because they're very close to their goals. In fact, it's not only my opinion, uh, Carl's, um, Carl Schwab. I'm sorry, Charles Schwab, of the, the head of the WEP, the World, World Economic Forum, he said, that's his official statement, that he's saying, we're ahead of our schedule. He said that, we're ahead of our schedule with all the improvements, for instance, in artificial intelligence, and the technology, and the ability to control the masses, and um, the, the way that, you know, we're using the social engineering with the power of the social media uh, we're ahead of our schedule that's what he said and this whole thing that was a display of power that's what they did the French ceremony the Olympic game opening ceremony was a display of power by like World Economic Forum by the world the globalist elite in, in, in short, I'm going to call it this. In short, it was a victory of indoctrination system that can be classified as walkism. That's what they were doing. And we should be fully, fully aware of what's going on. And be ready and prepared. You might ask, what can we do? I don't know. But we should be keenly ready, aware, and be prepared for the potential outcomes of what we're witnessing. Again, their religion is nothing but LGBTQ, and whatever that represents is their religion now. And that's what they're trying to push. Because the main um, one of the main tenets of their ideology indoctrination is this they need to destroy 
for instance, the national cohesion and national unity. They need to destroy the concept of nationality and nationalism. They don't want, the New World Order does not want those things. Nationality, the concept of nationality, one, a person feeling like, I am French, I am English, I am I'm American, I am this, I am that. No, they don't want that. They want to destroy the concept of nationalism and nationality. They absolutely want to destroy, destroy utterly and completely the concept and structure of family. Because they don't want families, the mother, parents, they don't want the parents to raise children. They want only people producing children, that's it. The children must be raised by the system. That's what they want. That's why they don't want the family cohesion and structure and family values. That's one of the one of those pillars that they're working against, they're fighting against, and they're trying to destroy. And LGBTQ values, if you can call it values, the LGBTQ uh, system has all the ing ingredients to destroy the family values and family structure. They don't want necessarily any kind of love and connection and ties between, for instance, a mother and child. It is it, it works against their goals. They want the baby to be belong and be raised by the system with their ideologies. They don't want parents to bring their own values to raise that child. This is what the New World Order is. If you think the famous book, 1984, written, authored by George Orwell, is horrible, it looks like a picnic in compared to the New World Order. So they have to destroy the family structure. They have to destroy religious, uh, spiritual, belief systems, faith, they have to destroy it. They have to, uh, they have to destroy uh, the, the, the feelings of nationalism, valuing your own nation, um, like fighting for your own nation, flag, national values, they absolutely want to destroy all these. These are the cultural aspects, and cultural and uh, moral aspects of the New World Order. And economic aspects, again, I might have another video which I will try to be a little more detailed. But there is also obviously a very strong economic uh, attack or system change is coming up to be able to establish the New World Order. I don't know what adjectives you can use. I'm having difficulties to find the correct or proper adjective to describe the uh, how dire, how sad, how pathetic, how disgusting that will be for the human beings to live in a kind of in a world like this. But this is what they're trying to accomplish. <coughs> and the Paris Olympics was a display of power, the show of power, showing how emboldened they are and how far advanced they are in their in their plans to establish the new world order. Is there a way to fight with this? I believe there is. Because there are still more than enough number of people who understand what they're doing who can see through them, who can see how satanic they are, and they absolutely resist and don't want it, and they still have numbers and conscious, consciousness to fight against this horrible plot against humanity. 
in short, guys, I'm going to tell this. What we're fighting with or what we're facing as an enemy, and I believe you can clearly see why I'm using this word enemy. Enemy is nothing other than Satan himself. Now, the Satan is operating. It is here with us, amongst us, on this world, and behind all these sick organizations, such as what we, dis what we witness uh, during the Paris Olympic opening game, opener of ceremony. But I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic because I know there's enough, sufficient number of people who are seeing through this, who understand that Satan is here, we're fighting against Satan. And people will eventually pull together their resources. We'll figure out a way to get together and unite to fight against Satan and Satanistic, Satanistic system, which is called the New World Order. And its agents are such as European Union today and the World Economic Forum and the people getting, you know, gathering together every year in Davos, Switzerland, to kind of stir up the planes like these, these Satanistic planes, to come up with those planes. Another person I want to mention here, I cannot, you know, I cannot complete my recording if I'm talking about this subject matter without mentioning the name of a guy who I consider Satan reincarnated, George Soros. He is one of the most effective and loyal servants of Satan. Throughout the world, globally, we're witnessing all these uh, civil wars, civil strifes, uh, orange revolutions, uh, whatever you call it, bloodshed, war, famine, all these are created through his organizations and he delegates, he is basically kind of like a, almost, I, I resemble him to an octopus who have huge and lots of tentacles all four corners of the world who are behind his organizations to create nothing but chaos because their goal is this, eventually, eventually, by creating chaos, which they call control chaos, this is what they're doing. They are creating a controlled chaos. They're engineering this chaos. They can control it. And basically, they're gonna dial it up to the point that people will surrender, will say, enough is enough. There is no more hope, no more hope. And then they will come with a resolution to people and they will say, if you want, if you want to breathe, if you want to eat, if you want to drink water, if you want a little bit of life, now you got to listen to me, you got to listen to the solution that I'm coming up with. And the person who exhausted all his willpower, and he cannot even get up on his feet, completely exhausted and hopeless, and his spirit is totally and entirely broken, he will say, okay, I am willing to listen to you, whatever you say. And then he will say, oh, good. Then he will bring his own resolution. Then he will come with his solution. And he will promise the man peace on earth. He will fix all these problems of the, of, of the world for as long as the man listen to his agenda. And that agenda, by doing this, by accepting his agenda, the man will be forever enslaved. His soul will belong to Satan. What they call Antichrist.
I believe eventually the true Savior will come to the rescue of the world. Because at the end of the day, although I'm a deist, I'm, I believe in the Creator, and the Creator cannot be mocked, and the Creator cannot be beaten. He has the utmost and ultimate and eventual power. He is the one who created. He has the final say. That's why I'm optimistic. I guess I'm going to just turn here. I just want to turn here. And pull in this parking lot because I need to um, turn around. So. There you go. So, okay, folks. Um, I guess that's all I have to say. I appreciate your time. Thank you for listening to me. Be safe.